Hey everyone, it's David at Restoring Hope Church. Thank you so much for joining us. It's our mission to restore hope and make a positive difference in your life today. You are about to listen to Pastor Jackie McKiff from Overflow 2018. Remember to click subscribe so you can be the first to know when we release new content. Without further ado, I want to make welcome my dear friend. He's no stranger to this house, and I know a lot of you love this man of God. We would not be doing what we're doing today had it not been for him um, in our lives. I'll, I'll be honest with you. One of the very first places we went was to his place. Uh, where they, his, the title of his church is High Praises Church. Let me tell you something, they lift some praises high. And, um, and I remember, I think one of the first things we did was a New Year service. And it was one of those five-hour services. I mean, we had a time in the Holy Ghost. His family is just tremendously blessed. Uh, he's no stranger to you. But I want to say this about Pastor Jackie. There's nobody more committed and who believes in the word of the Lord than this man of God. And here's what I love about him. I can call him at 12 o'clock at night, and I don't do this too often, uh, but I'll call him and he'll talk to me for an hour if he has to, to pour into me. And I'm thankful for men of God like that in my life because I need it. Would you make welcome, brother, Pastor Jackie Midkiff. Come on, make him welcome in this place. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. It is, uh, it's humbling and so much of an honor to be here today. I'm just going to go ahead and start with a song that uh, I heard this song several months ago. A wonderful songwriter by the name of Jared Mullins wrote this song. And uh, Jackie Lee and I were driving back and forth to to Nashville in East Tennessee and he played me this song and and that's all it took Uh, I love the word of God I love that the Bible is true and I love that the word is the Lord sometimes we say we make statements like God where are you and the Bible says in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God So, if your Bible could talk, what would it say? I've been around here on this earth Since only God knows when All you wouldn't believe All the places I've been even though times have changed I've always stayed the same There's creases on my corners And blue ink in the margins A highlighter yellow On the words that hit the hardest There's a whole lot of color Underneath my cover Well I've been untouched Collect the dust Hop on off when someone lost was crawling their way through hell fists and tears have hit my pages from Genesis to Revelation I've knocked the devil off my shared shoulders black and white and red all over lived in the pocket of a back Never missed a Sunday service Then I found the hand of a man When the whiskey just quit working Love is kind and love is patient And I'm always right here waiting Well, I've been untouched Collect the dust Hop on that shelf I've been brushed off when someone lost Was crawling their way through hell Fist and tears have hit my pages From Genesis to Revelation I've knocked the devil off my share of shoulders I'm black and white and red all over I'm 
But the best part about getting to know me Is you get to know the one that wrote me Well, I've been untouched, collected dust Hop on that shelf I've been brushed off when someone lost Was crawling their way through hell Fist and tears have hit my pages From Genesis to Revelation I've knocked the devil off my share of shoulders I'm black and white and red Who's thankful for the word today? When, uh, when Pastor Aaron and Amanda asked me to come, I, how humbling is it to get to uh, be, first of all, at Restoring Hope Church. You've got some of the most incredible people on the planet at this church. Um, last night we stood in the back of the the auditorium and listened to Jason at the Grand Ole Opry and just brought the Spirit of the Lord right in that place. And um, just everyone, Miss Kathy and Steve, and um, just a few weeks ago, Brian and Crystal came up and they blessed our uh, couples at a marriage retreat. I'm thankful for the connection that I have um, with you in this church. And I just asked the Lord, you know, you got, you got Samuel, Samuel Rodriguez on Monday. You've got, uh, on Thursday, I guarantee you somebody's going to go home scratching their head, not knowing whether to uh, wind your watch or scratch your head because Perry Stone's going to say something that, you, you know. And then Rod Parsley. Um, so I said, Lord, what is my part? Because I know if they ask me, I... It wasn't a mistake. And I, I went back to the first time that they called me and told me they were going to start a church. And I was, I was standing on the front porch of High Praises Church, and, and I said, well, do you have a name? And Amanda, you know, being the quiet, shy, backward one she is, she said, oh, yeah, we got a name. See, names represent who you are. And um, she said, restoring hope. She said, because I believe God's going to restore a lot of people. I've put too many miles on the soles of my shoes Running from place to place But I'm gonna stop And put down some rooms And find the little grace Oh, I've danced with the devil Beneath the pale moon Confronting him face to face But I'm gonna dance To a different tune And find a little grace Well I've been too long At a fool's game And it's about Paid a high price for small change, but it's not worth the price of my soul. Now I must admit, it's taken some time to tame my restless ways, but I'm gonna.
Bibles today. I told um, them upstairs I didn't know exactly where to start, so I started in Genesis. <laughs> There's a story. I, 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 you can remain seated for the word this morning if that's all right. There's a story um, in the Bible about a man and a woman named Adam and Eve. They were created, and God said when he looked at them, he said, this is good. Then Adam and Eve, they made a mistake. They messed up. I don't know if there's anybody that's ever made a mistake or messed up in here. But... They made a mistake. Now, if you were to read Genesis 3, verses 1 through 19, and I won't because you can read it on your own some other time, you would find the story of how one afternoon, as he was accustomed to doing, God came into the, the cool of the evening into the garden, and he was looking for Adam and Eve. And Adam, God said, Adam, where are you at? And Adam said, we're over here. We're hidden because we're naked. Well, first of all, I want to point out something to you. That, and you, you can play as much as you can play the whole time if you want to. I saw you at the Grand Ole Opry last night too, didn't I? But a lot of times we paint this picture of God as being some kind of Nazi with a spiritual 30-06 perched up waiting to blow us away because we have sinned. And in fact, I got to thinking about this scripture, and I've, I've preached this message a couple times. As a matter of fact, this makes the third title I've put on this message. But um, I never realized what I realized about this scripture. It, it, maybe you have, but it was, it was revealed to me to this week when I was praying and studying. You know, first of all, how many believe that God is omniscient? He knows everything. And we also need to establish that he always was and always will be, Right? He doesn't operate in our mindset. He doesn't operate in, but he knows everything. So when he came into the garden that day and he said, hey, Adam, where are you at? And Adam said, we're hidden because we've sinned. And in Genesis 3, 11, God said something to him that caught my attention this week in a way I never had caught it before. He said, who told you you were naked? And I got to thinking, wait a minute. Why did he ask that question? Because God already knows. And here's what the Lord, here's what the Lord impressed on my heart. God went to the garden with the same intention for Adam and Eve that day even though he had to know that they had messed up. Say, now, Pastor, that's, that's kind of elementary. 
then why do we walk in perpetual guilt? Why do we continue to want to hold on to pain when today I'm about to tell you our potential has been placed inside of us by our manufacturer, our creator, God, the almighty God. And whether you use it or not, it does not diminish who you are and who he's created you to be. What we do does, however, impact our future. But the events of your past do not reduce your potential. How somebody has treated you, what they've said to you, does not change the mind of God about you. When he started into the garden that day, when he went to walk with them, he had to know that they'd messed up, yet he still wanted to hang out with them. I'm so glad Eva has got the word of faith in this house, is what I'm talking about. Because until we stop saying, well, I'm just stupid, then we'll always have a mindset that you don't have the mind of Christ. Listen, there's a fine line between arrogance and, and, and confidence. Humility is laced within confidence. Nobody wants you to be arrogant. That's the last thing this world needs is a bunch of arrogant church people. That's the last thing. But we will lose the arrogance, walk in confidence, and change lives when we realize who we are. I'm created in His image. <laughs> I don't know what He looked like, but He must have been pretty good. Somebody said, I wonder what God looks like. Well, he said, I'm created in his image. Is that not what he said? Now I'm just being a little facetious, but come on, y'all. Maybe you've been through some disappointments. I can't get that lady off my mind even now. You know, this past year, we have gone through a ride in our house. And I tell you, your boy might be 26 and sang all over the world, but when he is sitting there with needles in his arms and you see pain in his face, he becomes your baby all over again. And, and it's awesome to, when you walk away from that and you just want to, uh, as the old country song says, look for a place to fall apart, you go, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I can be the daddy he needs and you will be my father. It's because how he created us and the potential he placed inside of us. Listen, we need to believe because when we believe, we take a step of faith and we begin to stretch ourselves. When we start to tap into that potential, then we will understand that that's when we rise higher because the capability and the capacity of who God is, he placed in us without reservation. Now the real question is this, are you willing are you willing to break free of self-imposed limitations and start stretching yourself to the next level? I told my kids sitting at, uh, at a restaurant just before we went up, and Jackie was doing a New Year's Eve show in Pigeon Forge 2016 going into 17, and we were sitting there having dinner, and we were just recapping just the year and just enjoying one another. See, you need to take opportunity to enjoy your family every moment you have. Don't pass up a second. And we were sitting there and I told him, I said, well, I said, in 2017, y'all going to hear me say something that I ain't never said before. But I said, when I get to feeling sorry for myself, I'm going to look flat in the mirror and say, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> you know what I did? I even bought the t-shirt. Because 
here's the deal. Maybe it's maybe a business partner, maybe a coach, maybe a family member, maybe a friend. Somebody maybe said to you one time, hey, do you really think that you can do all that? Do you really think that this opportunity is for you? Do you really think that investment is right for you? God has the final authority in your life, not anyone else. And God says that you have a treasure on the inside of you. He says that you're a gift. He says that you're valuable. You've got to quit replaying that old tune and start singing a new tune. As a matter of fact, I want you to, I want you to say this with me. Somebody say, I am creative. I am talented. I am valuable. See, here's one place in the whole Bible God calls himself something, and it's when Moses was asking him who he was. He said, I am that I am. So I don't want to ever get up and say, well, I am useless, or I am worthless, or I am used up, because I believe that could be a blasphemy to who God says I am, because I believe that I am who I am by the grace of God, and I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb it says in revelation by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony so what i allow to come out of my mouth directs my path you have to get your mind going in the right direction because dwelling on the negative thoughts about yourself will keep you going in the same direction that you've always been. Regardless of who has spoken negative things about you, you've got to cast those words down. Let me help you with something. Words are powerful. And I love, I love being from the country. I love, I am, I'm just going to say, I, now listen, I pastor a church that is just chock full of wonderful African-American people. And I, I love to, but I am a redneck. <laughs> if I was really sanctified this morning, I wouldn't tell you that my favorite movie of all time is Urban Cowboy. <laughs> There's just something happens inside of me when Bud reaches over and puts Sissy's name back in the back windshield. There's just an anointing about that. But words are powerful. And I love being who I am, and I'm as country as country can be. But a lot of times, good old country boys have the hardest time with that because they just want to, well, I just say what I say, and I just what it is. And uh, I got a challenge for you, men. The next time your wife walks out and says, does this make my butt look big? Say this, say, baby, you don't need any help with that. Your butt is big. (laughs) If words don't matter, why don't you? Walk into your boss in the morning. Walk into your boss in the morning and say, you're an idiot and I could do your job better than you. (laughs) If words don't matter. I've been called the word police. I've been, you can call me what you want to, but it's a valuable piece of understanding to know when to talk and when to shut up. (laughs) If more men would figure out when to shut up. See, wisdom, here's what wisdom is. And if you're taking notes, write this down because this will help you. Wisdom is the ability to know the difference. To know when to speak and when not to speak. The difference in a countenance. (laughs) Boys, when she's got that certain look in her eyes, don't talk about a bass boat. (laughs) That's what wisdom is. I'm being funny, but I'm telling you the truth. Wisdom is the ability to know the difference. God gives us, do you know what the wisdom of God is? The Word of God. Words can create barriers in your heart. Words create pictures in your mind. 
too many people don't have confidence in the self-esteem that they should have because they're constantly dwelling on thoughts about themselves. You know what you need to be getting up every morning and saying? I am anointed. I am creative. I am talented. I am successful. I have the favor of God in my life. People like me. I hear people say all the time, well, it don't matter if people like you or not. You know you don't really feel that way down in your heart. I just, I just changed my way of doing it. I just expect people to like me. <laughs> Remember, I'm on the confidence side of the line. I'm not being arrogant. I'm a victor, not a victim. 2016 was the most horrible day and year of my life. I don't ever want to relive that again. But it does not take away the potential that God placed inside of me. Your situation does not define you. God did. He created you with a purpose. He gave you the personality you have for the, such a time as this right here. Now, if you go around thinking thoughts with low esteem, lack, lack of confidence, inferiority, nothing will change in your life. Today, I want to tell you to put your shoulders back. Put a smile on your face. Look for opportunities to stretch to the next level. You know what, I, I expect Steve because even though, you know, I don't know Steve that, that well personally, I just know his spirit. I expect Steve because I hear people talking about the real estate market in Nashville and how awesome it is. He's going to be blessed and blessed and blessed because the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God, which he does. And then all these other things will be added. See, your, your perspective can either be a world perspective. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, you know, what comes goes. I, you know, just, I'm just whatever. You can either look like that or you can take the word of God and take a word perspective and go, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The Bible says I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. The Bible says that I'm not, that I'm not uh, defined by what I'm going through. Now, let's go back real quick to the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they hid. In the cool of the day, God said, Adam, Eve, where are you? They said, God, we're hiding because we're naked. I love the way God responded to Adam. He said, Adam, who told you you were naked? In other words, who told you that something was wrong with you? God knew that the enemy had been talking to them. Well, here's my message for you today. God is saying to you, who told you that you don't have what it takes to succeed? Who told you that the best grades you can get in school are C's? Who told you that you are not pretty enough for the people that you hang out with? Who told you that you're not talented enough to accomplish your dreams? Who told you that your marriage is hopeless? Who told you that something is wrong with you? Listen, the enemy is a liar. And the word does not tell me anything but that I'm an overcomer. The world tells me that I would never find happiness again in a relationship. The word tells me that his steps are ordered for me and that he has plans for me. The word tells me that I ought to be 
kind of shaken because I've got a beautiful 15 year old daughter and, and, and her mama is in heaven. But the word tells me that I'll be your mother and your father and your brother and your sister. He's everything we need. Do you know what my daughter, and she's here today, if y'all want to see the most beautiful girl in the world, you got a chance. She is in the house. Just don't miss the chance. I don't know what everybody else does thinking that they got the most beautiful girl in the world because she belongs to me. <laughs> Confidence. <laughs> Who told you? Who told you that you couldn't be a good mama because you once had an abortion? Who told you that you couldn't do something and change women's lives when you were attacked at a young age? Who told you that? Who told you that you're not good enough for the beautiful guy in class? Who told you that you can't raise up a church in Hendersonville that doesn't compromise yet still loves people right where they are? Who told you that just because of the economy, you have to walk in fear? See, God didn't tell you that because God said, delight yourself in me and I will give you the desire of your heart. The word says, in, see, my, one of my very favorite scriptures and one of the life-changing events in my life is when I figured out who my source is. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, if you go to work thinking that job is your source... You're going to live in fear all the time because the economy, I promise you, the economy on this earth is going to go up, then it's going to go down. It's going to go up, it's going to go down. But he sits on a throne that is always level and he never changes. So when he said that he shall supply all my need, listen, I have to make good decisions, yes. I have to make smart moves, yes. But I am not going to live in fear because I know who holds my tomorrow. I know. Do you know that the, 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 thing that happened in 2007, 2000, I don't even know when it happened because my life wasn't changed. I saw things change. But when I understand that God is my source. See, the reason some people can't be in a healthy relationship is because every thought and move is out of fear of what the other person's going to do. Listen, I am so thankful for the godly relationships that he's put in my life, but I don't get my strength from that. I get happiness. My joy is increased, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm so thankful for my friends that came today to this service. Don't want to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to point them out. But there's several people came today just because I invited them. And I'm thankful for friends that I can pick the phone up and call. But what happens if you lose your phone? What happens if you know we don't know nobody's number no more? <laughs> Do you know when I was in, and somebody can come to the piano do you know when, Blaine, wherever you are? When I was in um, West Virginia as a little boy, my phone number, first of all, there was a big old white phone that, that hung on the wall in the middle of the hallway. And, of course, we had one of them, one of them big curly Q lines that you could walk all over the house. <laughs> you go in the bathroom, you shut the door, make sure it's under the crack so it don't get kinked. I mean... My phone number when I was a little boy is 855-304-855-3376. My daughter that I told you I love so much, if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you her phone number. <laughs> Call Gracie. 
So what happens when the people that you've placed all your faith and trust in are not there anymore? Listen, there was a woman named LaDonna Midkiff that I went to about everything and we talked about. And then all of a sudden, and, and everybody gave me the pat on the back for pastoring a great church when my God, she was the backbone. What happens when you go and, oh yeah, she's not there. You pick up your phone at, a, at your daughter's basketball game and you start to call her and you have to put the phone up. What happens when tragedy changes your life? What happens when your boy calls you from the road saying, Dad, something's wrong with my body? What happens then? You better know who your source is. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. God said in Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing for those who do what is right. Who told you that you couldn't get that promotion? Who told you that? Well, I just don't think I'm a leader. Who told you that? God says that you can do all things through Christ. The potential is inside of you. Listen, this is really important that I, that I make this statement. I've heard my whole life in church... If you don't use your talent, God will take it and give it to somebody else. That's not true. It's not true. And if you've said that, I don't want to offend you today. I promise I, I, promise I didn't come for that. One time I was talking to my mama. How many thankful for your mama? I was talking to my mama on the phone. You know, I was just talking like a preacher. I said, well, you know. The Bible says, I probably didn't do all that, but I said, the Bible says that in the last day, you know, you not know one season from another. She said, now, if you, you got to know my mama, she never raised her voice in her life. She grits her teeth pretty good when she's mad, but she don't raise her voice. She said, now, Jack, that ain't right. I said, what? She said, the Bible says that as long as the days are, there'll be the seasons. I said, yes, ma'am. See, a lot of times we hear stuff that's not true, but we take it for the truth because we're not willing to find the truth on our own. I've got a really good friend here today that is an accountant and she counts a lot of numbers. Just because she doesn't educate herself on the new laws doesn't exempt her from compliance. Are you with me? You wonder why you don't feel encouraged You've got to stop believing the lie of the enemy. And the Bible says, see, the devil wants to tell you today that because you messed up, you're not usable. Because, because you were taken in that back room and that was done to you, you're, you should live in shame for the rest of your life. The Bible says in Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, for God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. That means God is never going to take back the potential that he placed inside of you. He's never going to say, I'm tired of dealing with you. He's never going to say, you've tried and failed too many times. He's never going to say, you've made too many mistakes. God is never going to say, let me just take all my gifts and callings back. No, no, no. Those gifts and callings on your life will be with you till the day that you leave this earth. 
But it's up to you to decide whether you tap into it or you believe the lie. This has been Pastor Jackie McKiff from Overflow 2018. We hope you've enjoyed this word. If you would like to hear more messages like this one, please take a second and click the subscribe button and visit us at rhctn.com.